What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. We've got a killer show for you today because Robert Ring is back. He's back with us. And if you miss his first episode, I pity the fool who did that. Clearly, you are mm. not making good life choices because Robert was a blast on his last episode. We talked about cold calling and, and uh, call reluctance, overcoming fear. Uh, Robert is kind of a, a master at scripts and helps agents not only uh, reach out and um, close leads from open houses, from their database. He also helps agents get their careers off the ground in his capacity as a, um, uh, you know, kind of from the mortgage side, working with his realtor partner. So we've got a bunch of stuff. We're going to talk about everything from contacting past clients to an escalation clause to, you know, fun and fun and not so, you know, dirty things you can do in the negotiation process to get <laughs> deals done. We're going to talk about all kinds of fun stuff. and We're going to have a blast doing it. So first of all, the junior grandmaster himself is in the co-pilot seat where he so belongs, looking very colorful today. Greg McDaniel, what's up today? What up, buddy? You are very colorful as well. I feel like you're cheating on me. I just got to say, I feel like you're cheating on me because you're <laughs> representing your other podcast behind you, not our podcast. This is uh, up now i don't know how to feel uh, actually what's uh I, I should dig it out i've got it i've got the um the show logo is is framed and i need to put it on that bookshelf back there so i have it i just need to put put it up no man i don't feel that that's the type of relationship i want i'm not poly i'm not going to share you with someone else so um i want you to take off that other one and put our logo on when we have our show okay no no <laughs> because my show is launching next week so this is uh <laughs> Everything is about the U.S. You asshole. This was planned, and this is a perfect opportunity for Matt to do his plug. So why don't you just tell us with it and get it over with, and then we can move off of that subject. Yeah. Then we can, Ooh, I like it. Thank then you, Robert. We can actually, was not signing on that. That's right. Uh, so, all right. so the brief plug plug, it away. The podcast, the podcast launches. Uh, it is all about how to turn a rock star business into a UX machine, and the UX machine being the type of business that throws off exponential impact uh, into the world by solving big, valuable problems and creates exponential time and financial freedom for us in the process uh, while allowing us to serve clients and build a team of awesome fellow entrepreneurs. So that is what a UX machine is. That's what the show is about. And we get to interview uh, all kinds of awesome, awesome people. So one of them actually is a guy I interviewed last week that his episode will be coming out in a couple of weeks is Mark Davison from Thousand Watt. They're a branding uh, company that works with real estate brokerages. They are the ones that did the new logo for the re leading real estate companies of America. So if you're a, if you're in an indie brokerage that's part of that whole network, uh, Mark and his team is the one that did all of their branding and they are masters. And that was an awesome conversation. We talked about Century 21's new branding initiative. We talked about the crappy NAR logo and what his thoughts were on that. Uh, that was a, that was a fun, fun conversation with a branding master uh, and so you'll see that uh, that come out here in a couple of weeks on that podcast so, so today's that's the new show, show real estate uncensored brought to you by matt johnson with ux podcast coming out next week thank you robert i appreciate that yeah. <laughs> all right now let's get on with the show so robert why don't you tell people where you are at and what you do sure so i'm a, a mortgage loan officer in uh, concord california with people's home equity um, one of the ways that i built my business is through working with real estate agents but more specifically, finding strategic ways to help them grow their business. And I found the best way to do that is to um, work with agents uh, on scripting and converting leads. Because if you look at the amount of leads versus the amount of transactions done, it's like last year, I think 150 million leads were sold in the United States and 5.5 million transactions were completed. So there's a big gap cool. there. There's a huge opportunity to help agents, you know, all over the place convert those leads and get your foot in the door to build a relationship uh, and build business. And so I found that that's a really... Um, valuable tool that I use to um, get to know more people in my community. Love it. So what are the some of the things that you're doing to bring that value, to do the lead gen, to, to become that strategic partner? Is there, is there anything specific that you and your team are doing? Because I know that you, you're quite successful at lending. You know, obviously you and I have been friends for a while. Ran into him at a, at like a bunch of agents and lenders had come over from the vet center in Danville over to a bar right across the street, bar restaurant. And as they all flooded in, I'm like, Robert, he's like, Greg. And so he's always in there mix, mixing it up and mingling with the, with the agents. Um, mm -hmm. So to give me an idea of like an, an, a, a lender of your quality and caliber. Mm -hmm. You know, what should, what should an agent be looking for in their lender, both in their abilities and in their willingness to help both of you grow your businesses together? Sure, that's a great question. I think that, um, well, the first thing is you should always look for somebody that's present and, and volunteering in the community. You know, the reason I know all these agents is because I go to these events, I go to the charity events, I go to the marketing meetings, I shake hands, and I just show up on a regular basis. You know, for the first year and a half, it didn't get me a single deal. But after that, I started to 
get to know people on a deeper level. And that um, really launched me into a different place in my career. But what people should look for uh, with a loan officer is, um, I mean, somebody that's dedicated, hardworking, and really knows what they're doing. I think that it's really important to work with a loan officer who is super knowledgeable. And that comes with experience. So I always tell new loan officers, you know, uh, if, if you're new, join somebody who's not new. Get on a big team so you can learn and soak up that knowledge. Because that's what I did in the beginning. And I worked with some really incredible loan officers um, that taught me things that were amazing. I mean, I, I remember sitting with one of my original um, managers. His name's Joe Trippy, um, And we were going through an approval. And he said the underwriter calculated this wrong. He got on the phone with the underwriter and helped her walk through it and corrected her. And then, you know, it was like one condition. We just got it cleared like that. And I just watched him. I was like, whoa. You know, I, at that point in my career, I wouldn't have thought to challenge an underwriting condition or to call an underwriter and tell them that their math was incorrect. Uh, but he did it. And, <laughs> mm. you know, the person was awesome. super nice and, and thankful when he was done. So he wasn't like a big jerk. Um, so that's important. I think you need to work with somebody that has a big team as well. It's super easy for loan officers to get caught up in this cycle of I'm going to go out and I'm going to meet with agents. and I'm going to give them the referring business. And then I'm going to go sit back in my office and do all the business. And I'm going to go back out. And so you have this like heartbeat monitor of business, it's, you know, boop. You know, and it's just, <laughs> you know, heartbeat the, the, the monitor there, of business. Perfect. At a certain point, because you always need to be in front of people. So, like, I've got a big back end team, and I joined one of the top lenders in the country, Jeremy Forcier. Uh, he does about 350 loans a year, and um, he's got a massive, massive processing team. And so, I plugged into that. Um, I'm technically a branch manager, but I don't, I don't have any loan officers working for me right now. It's just me and my assistant. We get our business, we plug it in. So, somebody that's knowledgeable. Uh, has a big team and is present and engaging in the community. I think those are super important things to look for in whoever you work with. Love it. Yeah, the 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 present and, and engaging in the community. I think it's a huge thing because then you guys work together as one unit out there. Uh, you know, at the different events, people seeing you together. Um, I think that's one of the more more important things because, like you said, sometimes lenders just have a tendency to sitting sitting back and not doing anything, um, mm -hmm. and then. You know, then it doesn't bring any value to to you as the as a real estate agent because you need a, a strategic partner. Now, the only reason Robert and I do not work together is because I have my best friend and brother who is in real estate, and he's been a lender for I've been working with him for almost 19 years as a lender. But like, he's he's very much like Robert. He wants to be a part of it. You know, the radio show that we we are that you know my co partner Tiffany, who just logged on, Tiff Dog, I see you. Um, on KGO, you know, Casey stepped up and he's going to be, you know, paying quite a bit of money a month to be, be a part of it. And that's the, that's the quality of people you need. It used to be, Robert, and you correct me if I'm wrong, it used to be in the mindset of like, and it, not that you did this, but the lending industry would just be like, hey, I do lend money. Hey, real estate agent, you go pay for advertising and give me all of your leads. And that has shifted. Now it's a pay to play game. If your lender is not participating, if they're not willing to, you know, you know, work with you and put some money out to bring the buyers in, you got to shift over. You need to call Robert right now because he will help you out and help you grow your business. I know this man. I've seen him for many but years. On that note, though, I think it's really important to delineate because I've had agents that have asked me for a lot of money, and I'm like, no, absolutely not, because you have to look at the amount of business they do. Because as a yes. lender, you know, you got to remember our our commission is about a third of what the average real, realtor makes per transaction. So we have to do more to make it profitable. So if we're splitting, let's say we do Zillow ads and we're gonna spend 5,000 a month, 2,500, 2,500, you may get some listings out of that. You know, one listing may pay for it for the whole year, who knows? I need to close like three to five times more business just to get that, because I'm making commission on the loan amount, which is smaller. So the, the way that I approach it is, I always develop a relationship with people first, take them to coffee, and I always wanna do two to three transactions before we dive into any sort of co-marketing agreement. Because I want to see, number one, are we a good fit? Like, do we like working with each other? Do they like my response times, you know, the knowledge that I bring to the table, that sort of thing? If we're a good fit and we can keep a good rapport going and a steady stream of, of business, um, we can really open up a big budget for um, a lot of things. We can go on on uh, TV. We could do podcasts like Real Estate Uncensored. Yeah, <laughs> one Plug. Plug. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, oh, I I'm picking up what he's plugging. laying down. Trust me. Yeah. I, I, I see it. I see it. <laughs> so, you know, I think it's like I, had, like I work with this guy in Oakland and he always sends me business. And we just had we have a great relationship. We love working together. I refer him deals as well. Um, and he wanted to pick up some Zillow stuff and he wanted a lender to do it with him. And I was like right there all day long because it's just going to add to our business at that point. When it doesn't add is when there's no relationship standing and then you start spending a lot of money and then you can be in the hole for a long time. So I just think you got to, if you structure it right, you can really uh, have a profitable relationship with a lender.
Well, yeah, and, and I wanted to point this out for all the agents that are that are listening that maybe aren't familiar with kind of uh, marketing service agreements and the idea of get like getting into a business partnership with their lender. Uh, I mean, from your perspective, Robert, you're looking for people ideally that have a lead conversion process, a system that they follow, some sort of you know, not just that they have the skills and the scripting and things like that, but ideally they just have a, a certain way of doing business, a certain way of converting leads that you know you can count on. Um, and this is where we we miss it a lot of times is because of our reluctance, I guess, to kind of make sure that we have have our, our proverbial shit together and, and put our, you know, put our systems down on paper or put our processes down or whatever the case is. We miss out on opportunities to partner up with people like you that would like pour gas on the fire and help us generate more and more leads. Uh, like if somebody came to you like an agent came to you and said, look, dude, let's, you know, I, I heard about you. I saw you on Real Estate Uncensored. You're the type of person that I like to be in business with, but I want to show you what I can do. Here's my system for converting leads. Like when I get a call, I'm going to pick that call. If I don't immediately answer, I'm get, I'm returning that call within three minutes. And then from then on, here's what I do. Like if they laid the process out, like you'd be like, you'd reach for your wallet so fast, you know, like the, you'd have to, you'd have to contain yourself and go, all right, slow down. Like, Let's do a couple of things together. Let's do some open houses. Let's like let's, let's let's see it. But yeah. like, how fast would you trip over yourself to partner up and give that agent money for their lead generation if they already had their their shit together and showed up with a plan on how to convert those leads? That's a great point. And I would ask another question. I would say, you know, if they're already at that point, have they partnered with a lender in the past, or what does that relationship look like? Because um, mm -hmm. I've gone I've gone to people and they'll want me to to spend you know a thousand to five thousand dollars a month. You know, which is doable. We can we can do that if it, if the recipe makes sense. Um, but then I'll say, has anybody done this for you in the past? And they may say, well, we had a lender doing it with us for the last eight months, but they stopped. Now, why did they stop? Well, because they they weren't closing enough business out of it. So we always have to gauge it. But then on the flip side of that, I do meet with people who have a, a really good lead conversion system. They generate leads, and like you said, they want to pour gas on the fire and they want to blow it up. Um, and it's just a perfect opportunity to match up. And join. That's what I love. I think lead conversion is so important because, as I said earlier, 150 million leads were sold last year. 5.5 million transactions were done. So, if I'm going to spend that much money, we have to have a really good system in place for getting those people in contract uh, and closed. Uh, it's yeah. just one pillar of the business, right? We all have multiple ways we get that: past client calls, um, you know, networking, open houses, etc. But you're right. If we can set up the right recipe, I think uh, lead gen, market sharing, MSAs are are really valuable. You know, I've been doing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of looking into and watching and listening lately in the last couple of days about the future of lead generation. And as all of you guys probably know, if you don't know, I do a 4.30 show and I do live calls. And I've been seeing that dwindle substantially. Even from the beginning of the year, I've seen it shift in a downward movement towards lead, you know, pure good lead generation here in California. And everything that I'm hearing is that you uh, needs to go towards branding, and trust and, and connection with communication all of those built in together and going back to your database and really building that trust you know you, you using using potentially send out cards you know to build trust i sent out four cards yesterday i have a coaching client of mine that they're sending out like they sent out like 80 some odd cards in the last month and a half i mean she's a machine but they're getting really positive responses because they're connecting at an emotional level um, I think I believe it was um, Tim Ferriss, Matt, that said, you know, uh, thousand raving fans. You know, all you need is thousand people to they're just all on fire for you, and you're set for life. You don't need to do the Zillow. You don't need to do all these things out there. All you need to do is get people that are emotionally bonded to you because they have a connection to you, and if you bring value to them on a consistent basis. So, like, let's say Robert and I were working together. Well, we would be at different events together. We would be hosting open houses. We'd be doing crazy marketing things together. But you're also reaching out and saying hi to them, bringing something valuable to the consumer, not saying, here's an ad. An ad isn't going to have very, very much power in the future unless it's you know very strategically done. Would you guys agree with me on that one? I think that's going by the way of the dodo bird a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. I mean, you got to have a in, good ad, and it has to grab people's information. I think people sponsor things on Facebook sometimes that don't have a really good funnel behind it, so you don't get the contact info and you don't have anybody to call. Exactly right. I know we had, uh, you know, our buddy, the Zillow killer on the show uh, last week. You guys got to go check that episode out. When it drops on iTunes, if you guys are already hearing this on iTunes or you're watching this on Facebook right now, go watch his show. 
the way he does lead generation would be perfect for a lender and an agent to work in harmony together, you know, being seen together in the area. I mean, it's just yeah. epic stuff, and it has to do with video. Well, speaking of that, I want to talk about low-hanging fruit for a second because there's a great question uh, that I want to bring to both you guys. This is from Keith Bonham on the Legion and Scripts Objections page. He says, what's your best uh, script for contacting past clients uh, to kind of generate new new lead opportunities? So, Robert, I'd love to start with you just from your perspective uh, on the mortgage side uh, and, and just from helping agents. Uh, what would you call up just to go through your past client database and uncover new opportunities? Sure, that's a great question. Well, for me, it's twofold because I, I can do refinances for, for clients before they were to sell again. But uh, this really starts at the beginning of the transaction. So if you haven't been doing this already as a lender or as a realtor, uh, it's really important to map out the life of the um, the ownership of that home for that client. And I always go over their you know, short and long term financial goals, five and 10, 15 years, maybe. Um, one thing I always point out to them is based on average appreciation rates over the past decade or 20 years, whatever, we get a number based on where they're buying. Um, you know, we need to determine a point in which if you do not sell at that point, you will incur capital gains taxes when you do sell. Mm -hmm. So having that conversation ahead of time really sets it up nicely for when I call them in two years and say, hey, your home's appreciated X amount of dollars. Are you ready to move up and buy something nicer? Or in five years when it's going to appreciate beyond what they can um, defer when they, you know, sell and rebuy and say, hey, maybe now it's a good time for, uh, you know, you and Greg and I to uh, get together and discuss listing your home and getting you into that. Uh, you know, five bedroom, three bath with a view of Mount Diablo. So I think setting it up right ahead of time is really important. And if you haven't done that, then uh, I think just, just, just go through your, you don't really need a script with past clients, but have a good reason to call them. And I always find that the move up is a great reason, um, but you can always check in. Like I, I have a questionnaire that I get from Todd Duncan um, and I haven't used it extensively, but it has some great questions on it. And, um, you know, has anything changed since the last time uh, we spoke or you purchased your home, you know, is your family growing? Has anything changed with your jobs? You know, just kind of some basic questions that may trigger them to say things like, well, I'd like to see what it would look like if we sold or if we were to buy another house or converted this one into a rental. You know, um, I think those are easy conversations because you already know them. You already built the trust. They already closed the transaction with you. Yeah, the <laughs> level the level of trust is there. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, like you have a check checklist from Todd Duncan and Todd is actually the guy that was with Tom Ferry, the video that I was talking about. Um, the video that he did and it was a phenomenal video um one of the things that terry used to do uh, when he was full-time in the business is that he would uh he'd have the best little script he'd be driving around town and he'd, he'd just call up and say hey just drove past your house just thinking about you popped in my mind wanted to say hi he could be planted in his office it does not matter but it, or they sound like oh this is your landline i was like oh, i know i was you know i was driving by your home earlier today and i just popped in my in my head and i wanted to give you a quick call people want to feel special that's the number one thing. People really want to feel special. They want to make it feel as if they are not just another number. They want to feel as if you actually give a shit about them. And so, I mean, some of the things that I would encourage people to do is, you know, I'm, I have my insurance broker, Sean Smith. He's also a part of our EXP team as well. He's very successful in insurance, but he has a heart for real estate. So what I, I'm going to have work with him on is having him call through my database and talk to them about, hey, Greg, Greg was talking to me the other day, or Terry, or Chris, or someone was talking to me the other day. Just he, he asked me personally, give you a call just to see if I, you know, could take a look at your home insurance rate, see if I could lower lower your yearly and yearly payments. You know, it's completely different. But when Sean and I went door knocking, he picked up three clients door knocking. He saved one eighteen hundred, one twelve hundred, and one eight hundred dollars a year just from going out there, and it made wow. me look like a rock star when I was out out on the doors with him. Um, you know, call and obviously Robert, you know, call about refi, let's lower that mortgage, yada, yada, let's pull some equity out, let's go buy a house. You know, another reason to call and say, hey, look, Robert, dude, I suck. Dude, I am so sorry. I have not called you in six months and I've been meaning to. That is totally my bad. Can I treat you to a coffee? How's life? Yeah. How's Mary? You know, what's going on with the kids? Matt, Julie, those little, you know, obese little wood denting insulin suck control babies, are they still the size of a house or did you get them down to the size of a condo? I mean, how, how's that weight loss program going? <laughs> you know, just having these, these, these conversations with people. <laughs> we got them, we got them double down. Wise. Double wise. That's yeah. a question I didn't, I forgot to add to my checklist. Yeah. So good <laughs> 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 how, did you get, how did you get your that fat kids? You get questions. those fat kids on a weight loss program? Yeah. Are you sending them to camp this summer? <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, the other one is that, you know, I use Rockstar Connect, right, as for my right. networking groups. And so you can call them and say, Robert, 
buddy, how's life, man? You are you're still in loans. Last time we talked, you're still in loans, right? You are, dude, man. I threw a networking event. Uh, would you want to come down? Uh, there's some people I think you should probably meet that I could, you know, pretend, do some personal introductions to and get 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 you some more clients. Would that be something of interest to you? Would that offend you? Absolutely. It would offend you. <laughs> oh, no, no, I thought I was like, wait, you're prepping me to invite me to this. <laughs> Absolutely, that would offend me. What? I'd be yeah. completely offended, yes, but me and my fat exactly. children will be there, so give me the day. <laughs> Those little baby hippos. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. I forgot about that. Oh. But- but those Love are some it. of the things you just want to, you know, and then the, 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 the dovetail on that, guys, the, the really the, the powerful part here is this, is that once you make contact with these people, I mean, you have Gail, hashtag BFF girlfriend, you know, she, what she teaches about is that she is the selfie queen. You've got to be a little bit more narcissistic. And when you get together with them, just grab them by the shoulder and make photo time, take a photo of them, put them on the front of a send out card, send it to them, say, hey, Robert, it was so great to meet you the other day. You know, let's hang out again. Hope to see you soon. And then you send it off in the send out card. Now they have it up there and they, they will not forget about this. Matt, I didn't, I didn't tell you this. I reached out to Sarah Johnston uh, the other day because uh, I'm going gonna, mm-hmm. I'm gonna to send her another card. She doesn't know it yet. But she, <laughs> I sent her one of the giant cards from the last time she was on the show. Mm-hmm. She started, she's like, oh my God, I'm such a jackass. I, when I got your card, I laughed out loud, but it's still sitting in my living room on my mantle. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> That's the power of the follow-up with this stuff. Make it personal. Make it something that is unique to them, not just a generic follow-up card. People yeah, need that. it to be unique. Yeah, That's we've talked cool. about this uh, a little bit before, Greg, just the idea that uh, like cold call, like true cold calling, like the ability to kind of dial through the phone book, dial through you know neighborhoods and stuff like that off of, a, off of an automated line, um, either culturally or legally, uh, is, uh, is getting to the point where it's not, not so hot. Uh, not not so much with the cold calling. Um, so I think the challenge for us all is to be able to reach out and build relationships on social media and then allow people to kind of use social media to screen for the people that they want to talk to. And we need to make sure that we're in that inner circle of people that when we call, that they know our number, they have us saved in their phone, and they pick up when we call. And then those, like this leads back into the question from from Keith, on the Facebook group, like, hey, you know, like, how do you call and, you know, generate leads from, quote, past clients? I think, like you said, Robert, there's there's a couple of scripts that you can use, but for the most part, a lot of it's the same type of call, and it's actually the same kind of call you might use with just people that aren't even past clients. They're just in your database. It's just the, hey, you know, calling because of X, Y, and Z, just wanted to reach out and see how things are, you know, how's life treating you? You know, any, uh, you know, just catch me up, just wanted to, uh, you, you came to my mind. Uh, like those types of calls, I think are going to become more the norm. Like that's going to be our new cold calling is calling through a list of people that they're kind of already in semi relationship with us and they know us by name. We may not know them super well, but we can literally just pick up the phone and have that same kind of conversation uh, as opposed to, let's say, Greg, what you're doing or have been doing when you're truly calling cold into a neighborhood. It's a lot of the same skills and the same skills transfer over. But we're going to have to like work the social media first and build that list of people who are willing to take a call. Then we can call. Yeah, that that's a great sense. point. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Long, awkward pause. <laughs> Sorry, I was well, responding I, to Veronica. She was, she was, yeah, I know. Uh, no, she was fine. saying it's that fine. she'd the are more important than what I'm saying. That's fine. Go ahead. Well, we'll wait. I realize that. I'm just gonna wait. I'm just gonna wait. <laughs> just, just gonna wait. <laughs> All patient and shit, <laughs> which would never happen. Uh, Matt, you brought up a good point. I mean, when you get, I, I think that one thing people need to focus on with their Facebook presence is becoming the expert. You know, and you gotta, you gotta split up your Facebook posts though. You know, I do like a, a third life, you know, stuff happening with me and mm-hmm. uh, my fiance, funny, inspirational stuff, and then uh, business stuff. And I try and make that engaging. And I just cycle that. And then, like, I get people calling me and emailing me um, just from Facebook, uh, friends of my family, people I went to college with. Uh, and it's, it starts to turn over. You present yourself as the expert. I think people need to look, really look at Facebook. Facebook's like the biggest tool out there. I think it's very underused for business. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Are you kidding me? Matt, um, Dr. Hank, he, uh, he's, a, he's a, I believe, a client of yours. He's also a fellow EXPer. He has a podcast. What is the name of his podcast? Because there's a reason I'm asking this. Uh, Agent Wealth Network Live. Agent Wealth Network Live. Now, my coaching clients today, they were talking about one of the guys that was on his show. And this guy, what he does for follow-up with past clients, and this could really help you guys strategize, you know, and really systematize your follow-ups. I'm I'm probably going to get this wrong, so Matt, 
correct me. Um, the guy, the guest on his show, talked about that. The, the every Tuesday throughout the month, he'll do he'll reach back out to people. So I think it's like the first Tuesday is the people that closed last month. The second Tuesday of month, the people that were three months ago. The four, third Tuesday was six months. You know, six months closed six months ago. The fourth Tuesday was the people that closed a year ago. Reaching back, just touching base, saying hi, but on a consistent, regimented basis. Um, and if you don't want to do, um, you know, calls to people because it might take too much time, there's a cool little app that I signed up for. It's one of our Aussie friends. It's called uh, Bonjourno, B-O-N-J-O-R-O. I'll put the link in here for you guys. But it's a it's a free, uh, well, it could be free or you can pay a couple of bucks a month. And it is little cu custom videos that you can shoot right from your right from your phone here. You can upload your database in there. You can put your own branding and logo on it, and just shoot out little quick little videos that go right into their into their inbox. You don't have to actually talk to the other human beings. I know we're all petrified of talking to other human beings, especially past clients. They actually like you, but God knows we'd rather go talk to people who don't. <laughs> Matt, um, but you know, <laughs> I just like to say things to make get his goat. Just like what? Uh, but this this thing's super easy to do, uh, and it's free if you want to do it, and it's and it's different. It's always about being different. I mean, Robert, what are some of the crazy cool things that you've done with clients that are different that stand out from the crowd? Is there anything that kind of comes to mind right off the bat? Um, yeah, I mean, sure. There's definitely some things. Um, like I'll go get beers with clients that I've never met before, and pull out a laptop and show them the whole total cost analysis that I use through Mortgage Coach. Uh, that's kind of a crazy funding thing that I do. I definitely send videos. I love the video thing. And every time I send out a total cost analysis, it comes with a video. If we've never met, this is great because you get right in front of them. Um, I use BombBomb. Bomb. Uh, one time I knew a client was really into baseball, and I put a green screen behind me, and I said I wanted to hit it out of the park with them. I put a baseball stadium back there, and I had a swinging <laughs> motion, <laughs> and I sent it to him. Um, gosh, what are some things? Yeah, I mean – Here's one thing that's kind of fun and crazy. I did recently at an open house. I mean, this was cool. I, I used the Open Home Pro app, and I put a question in there. Uh, we were doing it at Oakland, and it was during the playoffs, and I said, uh, uh, Warriors or Rockets? And it was a multiple choice, and they were both Warriors. So that was kind of fun. <laughs> 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 uh, I, th I think you'd be fun. literally killed in Oakland if you said Rockets. Like, there I, would be riots in the streets. Yeah, one guy said he wanted to, he wanted to choose Rockets, and we kindly asked him to leave. He didn't. Yeah, he exactly. Didn't. <laughs> Sir, we're going to have Rockets to uh, get out. kindly escort you off the premises. Uh, we'd ask that you uh, not leave any dirt behind. Um, okay, this is a really good question uh, from, from Antonio, who's watching live with us, and I wanted to get to this before we dive into the escalation clauses just because it ties back into our earlier conversation. Uh, so the question is for you, Robert. If a realtor sent you X amount in referral business, what's a reasonable percentage amount to ask or expect back in terms of marketing dollars? Um, uh, zero, because RESPA Section 8, the Real Estate Settlement and Protection Act, says that we cannot get anything based on the amount of referrals that we've received. But that being said, it's very important to have a, um, a solid relationship with somebody before you start spending money. And I think that if you are sending somebody business, it's not a bad conversation to have. You know, I mean, I, I don't want to spend money with people that uh, would never refer me. So that's one. Like, they have to be – they have to trust you enough to refer you. So I think if, if trust is established – you know, there's enough there. And then I think the next conversation you can have is not how many deals have I sent you so you can spend this amount of money, but um, if we were to spend this amount in marketing together, what could your, you know, and we could close this amount of business, could you afford what this would budget? Just have a budget be? conversation. I mean, right. yeah, it all kind of drives back to, like, you know, how much business you're doing together. That's a huge piece of it. But you cannot directly tie it to, um, you know, I'm sending you this business, so you need to, how much, you know, based on that, can you pay me? I mean, if you did, I could give you numbers, but, you know, you can't, you just can't look at it that way. Yeah. And if you yeah, go around yeah. telling lenders that, you know, you might piss off the wrong one. I would never say anything to anybody about it, but I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> good, good advice for Antonio. Yeah, so basically it's a, it's a matter of the way you phrase the conversation, number one. But number two, and this is a great point that I love from the book 48 Laws of Power, which is you, when you're asking for something, you never – Put it in terms of making it an obligation to repay for things that have already done. You always put it in terms of what's in it for them if they were to do that favor for you going forward. Like, hey, this is like if we work together on this, it's not an issue of what I've done for you in the past and expecting any type of like, you, you know, repayment or reciprocity. It's just like, hey, now we've got the trust established. Now here's what's in it for you going forward if we work together on this. Um, and that's just a good 
kind of life principle is just always put it in terms of what's in it for them going forward, not you know asking for something in exchange for some supposed works you you know favors you've exchanged in the past. Yeah, like you said, Matt, like pour gas on the fire. Like if, if a realtor sending me, you know, like let's say um, four transactions a month, and I'm I'm closing one or two of those per month, and then he comes to me and says, Hey, Rob, let's drop two grand on on this lead program that I'm going to do, and I think it's going to increase our business, and we can start closing five or seven deals a month, and I can start sending you 10 to 15 out of what we can convert out of that. Uh, I think that's a super good value prop. I mean, we're just trying to, like you said, pour gas on the fire, take what's already going, build it up. You know you work together well. You know you cross-sell each other, each other well, and you want to amplify that. Perfect recipe. Yeah. Love it. Cool. All right, so let's get into the uh, the escalation clause conversation because this is something we were talking about in pre-show, and Robert, you're you're seeing it. And, but you know, probably could see it a lot more, maybe even would like to see it more because it, it's a potential advantage to the clients that it's being used on. So before we get into the, you know, all the pros and cons and stuff, just give us the kind of the definition of the escalation clause from your perspective. Sure, so the escalation clause is, is really cool. You put in an offer and let's say your offer is at four, let's say the property's listed at, at 390, you offer at 400, but you know there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of people that are offering on the property, you don't want your client to lose out, you know that it may go for 410 or that maybe is your client's max. But you don't want to lose out. You put in an escalation clause that says if there are other offers, you will match the highest uh, and best offer up to uh, a certain amount, let's say 410. So if they get you know five other offers and the highest one is 408, your offer immediately rises to match the 408. Now, what I love about this is it, it, it makes sure that the listing agent has the burden of proof to show you that they have an offer at 408. So I know that some agents do this thing called puffing. Greg was telling me that's the term for it, where they say I have other offers. They'll send out a multiple counter when they have one, you know. I, and I've allegedly heard this. I don't, I don't, I can't call anybody out on it, but I've definitely heard of this happening in the past. And you know, it's 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 kind of unethical. But this is a total way around that. You know, if you have it, this is what my client will go to, and we need the proof to to determine that's what we'll do. Now that being said, some brokerages just don't allow that. They won't let you write escalation clauses in your offers, and they won't let you accept offers that have them. I'm not fully sure of the reasons behind them, although for some reason I think some brokerages, um, I don't know if they find them unethical or whatnot. I, I think it's a cool thing because like Matt, was, Matt and I were talking about earlier, it's a, it's a bidding. I mean, a lot, of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of homes are being sold right now like on home bids. It's an auction. You go in, you auction your price, you build in your buyer's agent commission, et cetera. Um, and, and really, when you buy a house, it is a bid. It's not an offer. It's, you're placing a bid on the property. So why not make it more real time? And an escalation clause is just one of the ways to do that. Uh, to make sure it's just like eBay. Matt was saying it's like eBay. You know, if you want to pay twenty dollars max for something, but it starts out at five, just you put that in there, and eBay will bid for you until it gets to this final selling price up to twenty dollars. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And, and Greg, just through our connection with Glenn and kind of learning more about the Australian market, and the like, auctions are way bigger over there, mm -hmm. and it's interesting to watch because there's really nothing about our. You know, we we're talking about this in context of the open houses too. Like, there's nothing really that stops us from being more of an auction culture in real estate, other than just maybe our general discomfort with negotiation. But I mean, auctions are, I think, have the potential to be like either uh, a growing segment of the way that we sell houses, or they could literally be like the next big thing, like the next platform that comes out that, that obliterates and changes our industry could be a, bl a bidding platform, uh, a, a, an easy be. way for sellers to go direct to the market, skip the agents, uh, and take their home and put it directly on the market, put it up for bid with a reserve, and just say like, hey, here, all, all takers, here's the home, start bidding. Um, and there's a lot of things that they could do. So I think the, the escalation clause is maybe an early, not an early form, but it's kind of a paper form of that. So I don't think that there's anything inherently unethical about it, which is kind of an interesting thing. Any, any guesses as to why a KW or something like that would not want those types of clauses in their contracts? Dude, I'm not going to speak for anybody on that one at all. Um, I need to do more investigations into the escalation clause and the legalities of it and the morality of it. Um, I don't. Again, I don't see any. There's nothing glaring at our, at our conversation here. I think that when it comes to the auctions, my mind goes towards you know, you know your organizations. Like if Zillow does truly jump in to the real estate side, I see those larger platforms that already have a lo huge amount of following. I see that's where people could go in there because they already have the make me move, you know, part of the of, of Zillow where that essentially is what it is, but it's not officially saying, here I am, world, I'll, this is my number, you give it to me and I'll pack up the dog and the cat and leave the kids and I'm out of here. But I mean, it's, it, it's it, I don't know, it, it's interesting to see if we will go there. Um, it, it, there's nothing to say it won't. 
I mean, our industry is radically shifting you know, under our feet right now. Uh, yeah. We were talking about doing the calls and the way people are attract, being attracted now versus what they were six months, a year and a half ago, uh, the way that was happening then. So I, there's no reason why it wouldn't happen that way. It's just not our norm now. So it's uncomfortable for people to kind of wrap their brains around the idea that, wait a minute, you're going to get rid of me as an agent? Well, they're already turning agents in California into W-2 employees of brokers. I mean, that's already starting Fancy. to take place. And that was an Inman News. Guys, go read the article. It's insanity. It's complete bullshit. Absolutely. It's, but yeah, you know it's, what? It is absolute like, bullshit. Keep up, keep, up, keep up with your legal fees. Hmm? Well, well, yeah. yeah. What? And, that, and that's a whole different conversation. Thank you, California, for moving in the exact opposite direction of everything else in the entire business world. Um, Got to love it. Um, Because it's funny because you yes. talk about, like, just the, some of the big changes that might be coming down the pipeline. Uh, I mean, it's going to be for, for anyone that wants to be like in the business world in the next 30 years. I think one of the very, very key like skill sets that we're going to have to build if we want to be really successful is we have to be able to like build and scale up a business very quickly and then pivot and scale down as things like change, because. I think things are going to change more rapidly and there's going to be opportunities that if you can scale up a business quickly, we can exploit that opportunity. And if we can't, the opportunity will close, you know, maybe inside of five years, whereas 50 years ago, that might that opportunity might have stayed open for 20, 30, 40 years, for example. Um, so I think things are just moving a lot faster. Uh, right. And and all, all the speculation right now, it's all just speculation. But, uh, you know, the whole California kind of trying to shift like freelance, what essentially are independent business owners over to W-2, like that literally is the opposite of what's happening in every other industry. Every other industry is shedding employees, sh trying to do everything they can to get out from under employing people uh, and turning a lots and lots of people who would probably rather be employees into their own small business owners. Um, and so there's a lot more people that are gonna be joining us out here in the wild, wild west of like figuring all this out for ourselves and figuring out how to be like independent experts and entrepreneurs like that's coming like um so those of us that are in real estate thank god we have a little bit of a, of a head start we've had we've been forced into that mentality more because of the way real estate has been um california like shifting over to w2 employees is not going to help anybody it's it's it you know it, it's negligible whether it even protects the public that's another debate but it's definitely not going to protect agents who already have enough trouble looking at themselves as a business and now turning them into W-2 employees will make that worse, exponentially worse. Yeah, make it, make it yeah, horrible. I mean, that's what happened to I mean Robert, officers. what do you think? That's what happened to loan yeah. officers in 2010 with Dodd-Frank. FHA mm -hmm. said that uh, if you originate an FHA mortgage, you have to be a W-2 employee, which is why we're all W-2. You know, and there's advantages and disadvantages to that. I think that being a W-2 employee, the part that is a disadvantage is um, writing off expenses, which we definitely incur, is not as easy. You know, if we write off unreimbursed employee expenses, which everybody has, it caps at 2% of your gross income. Whereas if mm. I have a 1099, I can write off everything in the sun under my Schedule C, and then I can buy a forerunner and write off my depreciation on my 6,000 pound SUV. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can't God do that with to employees, so I have to do other things like uh, buy real estate, how terrible, right? Find other write offs. <laughs> yeah, <But> hey, <laughs> horrible. <laughs> but I think the bigger thing to look at is, um, it doesn't really matter what the government does and how they how yeah. they change things. The, the better answer is close more business because if you have to pay yes. more taxes, guess what you have to do? Make more money. And if you make yep. more money, mm -hmm. uh, the best way to do that is to call your past clients and have a good script. And then I think we need to talk about the script for calling leads because we've talked a lot about leads. Are we going to jump into that? I would love to jump into that. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So last time I was on the show, I talked about um, about lead calling, but it's been a while, so I want to revisit this. And I've redeveloped, I've, I've, I've honed this down a little bit more. Um, when I call leads, I'll, I'll meet up with agents, and um, we'll gather all their leads. There'll be open house leads, Zillow leads, Commissions Inc. leads, whatever it is, and we'll pull them all together, and we'll just start dialing through them. And my favorite thing to do is to have them loaded into um, a power dialer. We'll call them three at a time. Um, and some agents are like, oh, I don't want to do that because it costs money, and I... If I can show them the light and show them how it makes you money because you can get a hold of so many more people if you're power dialing, um, it's super worth it. But uh, we start calling through, and if somebody answers, and let's say Greg answers, and he'll say, hello, and I'll just say his name right out, Greg, and I'll just kind of shout it like that. And people think this is super weird, but it works, so just trust me on this. Greg. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, Greg, this is Rob. Yeah. With, you know, whatever, whoever I'm calling with that day, I kind of, I, I have it on speakerphone we call together, so 
you know, they'll, they'll be like, you know, Greg, this is Rob with KW or this is Rob with PHE, you know, I'll kind of abbreviate the name of my company. I don't want to be like, hey, this is Robert Ring with People's Home Equity, a local mortgage lending bank, and we're calling to see if we can get you through <laughs> the contract. Um, you know, oh, my God. <laughs> because you have this 30-second window where you're trying to get their attention enough, put in enough of a hook that they'll listen to you and answer your two questions that you're going to ask next. So I start open with that. Hey, this is Rob from KW. How are you? Um, and they're like, oh, who's Rob and what's KW and why is he asking me how I am? But they answer. You know, you kind of hit them with, you kind of hit them off track because when you call your friend, if I'm going to call Greg, I'm like, Greg, what's up? You know what I mean? So I'm going to say his name like that. I'm not going to say Mr. McDaniel. He'll say, yes, my father's not home. Please call back later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've gotten in that part. They're like, good. And they kind of like put that question mark in their in the intonation. They're like, great. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for taking my call, Greg. I wanted to um, reach out because you came through our open house on one, two, three, whatever street the other day. And I wanted to follow up with you and see where you are in the home buying process and how we might be able to help. And uh, just two open-ended questions. And what I've learned and read and studied on this stuff is that you always want to ask open-ended questions in the beginning of the conversation to open it up. And then towards the end, closed-ended questions, close it down. So you kind of take them through this cycle, right? Um, and so, uh, once you ask those questions, most of the time, if you got people that far, they start answering your questions and they start telling you where they are in the home buying process. And then you have a chance to tell them how you can help them. So, I mean, I did this the other day with an agent and I love doing this with agents on top teams, like top, top teams. And I was doing it with one who's like, just dominates the marketplace out here, does a ton of business and had a new buyer's agent. And I met with him and, um, you know, he was new to the industry too. And so we started calling through and we started having really good conversations. We only called like five people and we had conversations with four of them and one of them lasted for 20 minutes. Uh, and, and we set an appointment for Sunday for somebody to list their house and buy another one. Uh, and he walked out of the room to get some water when this happened. I just carried the conversation and went through it. And when he's walking back in, I put it on mute. I'm like, are you available at Sunday at 1130? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get it back. So we set up a listing appointment. So it's super easy because all we said is those two questions. The guy was like, well, we came through the open house. Actually, he was a Zillow lead. Uh, I was looking on Zillow at this house and I want to buy a house and we have about this much to put down, but we really have to sell our house first. They'll just tell you. Um, and then I have a super easy script to set the appointment. And it's, um, look, I, real, I, I say, look, I realize that uh, business is earned and not given. And so I love the opportunity to earn your business. Uh, but I also realize that real estate happens on nights and weekends. So I've made myself available. I can do sometime during the week, this week or on the weekend, which works better for you. And it's amazing because, you know, when you ask that question, they tell you which one works better for them. And then you set the appointment and you go close the business. So yeah, I see a lot of times... You yeah, a lot of times I see agents they're afraid to ask the they are uh, they're afraid to ask the appointment setting question. They're afraid yeah. of the you know they're afraid of the rejection, but I mean they're if you think about it if they don't ask the question, the ultimately they got rejected by not even asking it. And I think that <laughs> yeah. you're showing agents, yeah, it's like trying to ask the hot chick out, but you don't ask the hot chick out, then you get rejected by not asking the hot chick out afraid of instead of you know her actually saying no to you. Yeah, it, it's it, it's amazing. how many agents have you opened their eyes to when they are like well, I don't know how to do, you know, I don't know how to do this. You sit down, you, you show them how to do it. And all of a sudden they're like, like they just found, you know, religion for the first time, their eyes are opened and they're like, Oh, hallelujah. And then they keep yeah, asking no. and they refer you business, right? Yeah. I do that all the time. I, I unfortunately can't relate to asking hot chicks. Out. I've never done that. Oh wait, just kidding. I'm engaged to a Brazilian. Yes, I have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I have. <laughs> Sorry, I, throw that in there. I feel very, very lucky about that. Um, <laughs> No, I definitely do. And you know what I hear all the time? And I just always stop the conversation. I almost want to hit the end button on the phone when they're doing this. But uh, when they leave the conversation absolutely nowhere, they say, have you been looking for very long? And you're like, what, what, what question is that going to serve? Like, what purpose is that? Well, yes, I've been looking for, you know, 39 days. Oh, 39. Okay, I'm going to make a note on that. Like, you're a psychiatrist. Like, this doesn't, you know, and they leave, the, they leave the conversation down all these rabbit trails that have no end point in mind. You know, when I ask questions, it's very, like, when I, when I say, Greg, I know exactly what I'm going to say at the end of that conversation. Like, it's so targeted and narrow. I'm not going down any rabbit holes. I'm not going to ask any stupid questions. Um, and and for, the, for the, you know, intents and purposes of this conversation, there are stupid questions. So ask good ones. Um, but, yeah, no, the light bulb turns on. They get the religion. It's like talking to a girl and say, oh, so you came out to the club tonight. You just wanted to have fun? Or were you looking to, you know, like, hook up with the dude? Like, it looks like me. You know? It's like. <laughs> Who looks like me? Don't ask stupid questions. You know? How long have you been not doing the club scene thing for, huh? It's like people just go off on these trails. And it's like, just cut all the shit out and ask the right questions. <laughs> <laughs>
That you was got awesome. Both me and Matt dying on that one. <laughs> look at the hook up with a guy that looks like or so, me. Yeah, which is yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not just any guy. Like what? What? But, uh, yeah. Oh man, Rob, that was awesome. Oh, uh, so fantastic. Oh, I'm gonna cry right. now. Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, here, here's the deal. So, Rob, I mean, you you gave the seeker, which is just you know what the outcome of the call is that you want. You know what couple of closed-ended questions you're going to ask to wrap up the phone call. So the only that like the middle portion for you is like I feel like you're running through a mental checklist. And this is Greg and I have worked with ISA team on this before, uh, and and uh, ran into a lot of the same questions that you do, uh, or a lot of the same problems. Like the whole like um, like hey like how are you doing today? Like no like don't don't ask, like that we don't no no don't ask don't that ask question. That. Stop it. Just stop yeah. it. Um. So what we figured out is that they, in order to like get to that point where they know how to shut down the conversation correctly, you have to have like this mental checklist of, okay, they agree with me on that. They agree with me on that. They agree with me on that. Great. Now it's time to like close it. Right. And you yep. go for the appointment. Uh, what I, what I think a lot of agents lack is they lack that kind of that internal structure and they don't really know what two or three things they're trying to get that person to agree with them on before they even go for the appointment. So they, that's where you end up with, the goal being just keep them talking. Well, the goal isn't to keep them talking. The goal is to get the appointment, right? The goal is to get just that little mental checklist of those two or three things checked off that you want to go, okay, great. We agree on this. We agree on this. We agree on that. Sounds like the best course of action here is that we need to get together to get you the information that you want or, you know, so that we can take a look at potentially earning your business. Um, here's the next step that I would like to do. Does that sound good to you? Great. Fantastic. I'll see you Sunday at one o'clock. Like that's, yeah. it's just, it's, it's that mental, it's that mental checklist of things that I think holds people back. You're hundred percent right. You gotta, you gotta navigate through that map in your mind as you're going through the conversation. And that, yeah. that ending thing that I end with, it's always, it's called the two option close and neither option is no. So that's, that's kind of an NLP trick that I learned that, right. um, you know, people don't realize it, but when you present two options to people and neither option is no, it diverts their attention from, uh, agreeing with you or disagreeing. And it goes to which option am I going to choose? So when I say I realize that uh, real estate happens on nights and weekends, so I've made myself available, I could do this week or this weekend, which works better for you. They immediately go, well, I think they start scanning in their brain Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which one's the best? Here it is. <laughs> so that's a really good thing to get people to because I, when, I, when I get to that point in the conversation, I mean most of the time, it's very rare that I'll get to that point in the conversation and people will back out. And usually if they do, it's for a different reason, like they're not serious or they can't really buy or there's something holding them back other than, because if you lay down the right roadmap and show them the right things to do and then present the right options for them to pull the trigger on their dream, they're going to agree with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the key question, Greg, and, you, and feel free to use this, is uh, so would you like to get out of here now or would you like to dance a little bit first and then get out of here? <laughs> that sounds like a closer talking if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't worry, I can give you a few minutes. You, you yeah. can yeah, yeah. Only give them two yes options. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Greg. Anything you have to say on that? Close us out. <laughs> did we lose Greg? I think we lost Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did. He dropped off. That's hilarious. Okay. Well, it's apparent now um, you've asked hot chicks out at the at the dance at the club before, so we know that. Oh, I'm I'm always at the club. That's if Greg knows anything about me, I'm always at the club, right, Greg? Oh yeah, oh yeah, you're a club rat. You 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 just mm, 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 all all weekend long. Yeah, that's right. Right. That's right. <laughs> Matt would rather be doing anything but dancing when, with other human beings touching him. He's like, ew, icky poo, ew, icky poo. I I, I gotta go. There's well, too many other human like around here. I gotta go to Starbucks. Leaves, you know, recycling old leaves. <laughs> Next time you walk up, you're like, no, 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 no. I know your shit. I'm not gonna say yes. Back off, okay? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Recycling old leads. <laughs> oh, oh, there's the ball in the corner again. My cheeks hurt. Oh my god, oh, that's my funny. Cheeks hurt. Okay, well let's let's do this. I've got oh, one question that I think we can close out with. But before we do, Rob, how do people reach out and connect with you? Sure, thank you. That's a great question. Uh, you can go to my website, robertringteam.com. You can email me at robert at robertringteam.com, or you can call me at uh, 925-322-1597. Uh, those are all great ways to get a hold of me. Awesome. Okay. And then Greg, why should people uh, bother to reach out to you <laughs> and how bother to reach out to me? You yes. jerk off. They I want know. to reach out to me. They, they, uh, well, the reason why, why you want to reach out to me. Privilege. <laughs> why should they take advantage of the privilege of getting a half hour with, with the McDaniel, with the junior grandmaster himself? Oh. 
well, why not? It's the real question. But mm-hmm. uh, so the the guys, all joking and bullshit aside, uh, bookmcdaniel.com is right in front of you. If you guys are watching this, also, if you guys are listening to this, go to bookmcdaniel.com, book 30 minutes with me. Look, I'm not going to go into it here, but there is a Kim Kardashian ass of squishy goodness of the all the added value we have for our EXP team, our training, our coaching, our mentorship, our products, our masterminds. You know, there's a lot of stuff there. So if, if EXP is something that's been on your radar for a while, I want you guys to consider coming over and listening to what we can add to you, uh, because our goal is to make you the most successful real estate agent in the in the company with everything that we're adding now, and then everything we'll add in the future for you guys. And then we pass it all down to you, you'll keep passing it down as the people you bring on. You can pass the same exact value to them so that's why we we want to see you guys successful that's why we do the show that's why we joined exp that's why we want i want you to take 30 minutes with me so go to bookmcdaniel.com get 30 minutes and uh let's change your lives (laughs) (laughs) all right so let's close out with this this is a question from cameron motion does in my market homes tend to move uh slowly 70 80 days on market uh average so uh, they're making phone calls uh, to past appointments, and the uh, runs into this objection. So they ask, you know, are you interested in selling your home this summer? The seller says yes. The homeowner says yes, but I don't want to sell or list my home until I find something I want to buy. Okay, so can you buy something without selling your current home? No. All right, so Greg, obviously this comes up quite a bit. This this is the situation that pretty much most people are in. They would love to buy. They're not going to put their home up on the market until they find something that wants to make them move out of their home, but they can't get that home until they have the proceeds from the sale of the home. So what's the best way to kind of handle that situation? I'd call Robert and get a bridge loan is mm-hmm. what I would do. Yeah, and, totally. and that, that, that's the le- that's a path of least resistance. I'll be like, Robert, I got Matt and Julie. Uh, we need a single level with concrete re- reinforced flooring. They have fat, they have fat babies. Uh, right, nothing on the cliff. Nothing on a cliff. Earthquakes are bad for these people. Uh, but <laughs> no. but we but they need to buy something, uh, and we need to get a bridge loan. Um, so can you go over and talk to Matt and Julie and get this done? We'll list their house, and then we'll get this thing happening. But we have a property we want to make an offer on. Oh yeah, one hundred. And then Robert, you you would take it from there. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Sleep. Easiest possible way. There's there's cool. there's no scripting involved. It's a, a tactical response to to a problem because that's their yeah. issue. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. So that's an Thanks alternative. That, yeah. All right. Sounds good. Um, anything oh, else, Greg? Easy. You want to close out with? I know no, that was very easy. <laughs> and Robert's like, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I would do. Let's do that. <laughs> Ooh, money, 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 money. Ooh. <laughs> I just um, want to know, like, what what market is he in that homes sit on the market for seventy to eighty days, and why is he not moving to California where they sit on the market for like eight days? Uh, exactly, Veronica Jones. Let's see. Where's Cameron? Where, 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 where? where? Come on, Facebook. Softening overall around the U.S. There, there is a softening in the market. A lot of different marketplaces were really starting to see people slow down. Australia has seen like an emergency break being pulled on their marketplaces. Uh, when I was doing the show with Glenn yesterday, Matt, he was he was talking about the fact in Southeast Australia, uh, yeah. they're seeing people that have like a hundred listings, literally a hundred listings, and they'll sell two a month. I mean, these people are losing oh. in their marbles. Good Lord. Yeah, it is. Okay. Holy shit, Veronica. Well, Yours are sitting on for 127 days. Holy crap. Texas. Texarkana, Texas. Good Texas Lord. Texarkana, Texas. I just like saying that. Texarkana, oh. Texas. Yeah. I didn't realize that's what was happening. I thought maybe these guys were selling hobby farms for like marijuana up in Eureka or something. <laughs> hey, 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 don't you knock a good time. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> kind of hard to lend on. <laughs> 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 Your proceeds yeah. are from illicit drugs, sir. Exactly. Mm. Like yeah, I'm gonna let me get you over to my uh, my hard money lender. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no appraisal on that one. <laughs> uh-uh, all cash. <laughs> oh, man, exactly. That's fun. Matt, don't where, where if, can he, get if you ask you? for Gino and he doesn't pick up, don't be alarmed. He will return your call at his earliest convenience. Yeah. <laughs> Do not enter the premises so, if nobody greets you at the that's door. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, so make sure that you reach out to Rob if you're in his area, and uh, obviously book a call with Greg. I uh, just want to also quickly thank you for watching and listening and consuming the show and sharing it with your fellow agents and your broker and all that fun stuff. Make sure that you leave us a rating and review on iTunes or whatever podcast app you enjoy using. Uh, anything else that we want to uh, tie things off with? I feel like we need to put like a nice checkered uh, bow in honor of Rob's shirt. 
uh, put a nice oh, little okay. checkered bow on this particular episode. How about that? I, I think we should. I think that's a very good way to go about it. Um, guys, okay, we are putting a checkered bow on this show because in, in lieu of our wonderful esteemed guest as he buttons up nice and tight over there. Um, but you guys, we absolutely have a love affair with all of you that listen to this show because we get, we, we are so enamored with the, 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 the quality of the people that listen to this podcast and the actions that you guys take and the successes that you're seeing. And that's why we're here. You guys are our reward. You guys are the reason why we do the show. When we get calls or emails or texts or anything else from people that are massively crushing it or just tried one tactic that we talked about somewhere in the show and they got a deal, they got a client, or they jumped, they, they got their business going. That is what we live for. So, you know, in, in all seriousness, reach out to Matt on Facebook. He does not get a lot of the positive vibes and you know stories that I hear. So if you guys have a positive story that you've gotten or done something with our podcast, seriously, send Matt a private message. Tell him your success story. Matt needs to hear the love too. I hear it every day though. I'm blessed to hear it every day. We are going to keep bringing solid people like, like Mr. Robert Ring back here again and again and again and again. So you guys can take the content, take the scripts, take the humor, go back out into your real estate business and absolutely crush it. So nice. Robert, you're a legend in your own mind and in ours, um, and we love to have you on the show. And we're going to keep getting, keep bringing you back uh, here and there, my friend, because I think you bring tremendous value. Um, Thank you. But it's it's my pleasure. But you know, as always, guys. Until next time. Peace out, ninjas. We gone.